there's definitely no turning back now. The James Webb Telescope has found a primordial galaxy as old as the universe. This discovery heralds the definitive end of the old astrophysics and cosmology. We are at the beginning of a completely new natural science that will change the foundations of our physics forever. If the new figures are correct, this galaxy is far older than the universe, and this means that our previous understanding of space and time must be completely reconsidered. But are we really ready to rewrite the history of the cosmos and expand the boundaries of our knowledge? It is incredible what is going on in science these days. A revolutionary telescope is showing us images of galaxies so old that they are beyond anything we have ever seen before. The reach of the James Webb Space Telescope is finally showing us the first galaxies that existed shortly after the Big Bang. However, these galaxies are so far developed that mathematically their formation must have taken place before the Big Bang. This cannot be the case because either this initial point existed 13.8 billion years ago, and then there was definitely nothing before, or there was no Big Bang. This is the only way we can currently explain the existence of these old galaxies. But then, what about the beginning of the universe? Since NASA published Webb's first deep image, one headline has followed the next. First, the team of the young Harvard astronomer Rohan Naidu discovered the galaxy Glass C13 with a redshift of approximately 13. This galaxy existed around 300 million years after the Big Bang. Glass stands for Grissom Lens Amplified Survey from Space. This international astronomy project is searching for the oldest galaxies in the universe, first using gravitational lensing and now, of course, using the latest images from the JWST. The data from this extremely old galaxy initially raised doubts in the international community of researchers, but a measurement error can be largely ruled out. Glass C13 definitely existed 13.4 billion light years ago. It's one of the brightest galaxies discovered so early in the universe and shows signs of intense star formation. It may contain many young, massive stars that belong to the Population 3 group of stars. These were the very first stars in the universe, huge, extremely bright, and short-lived. Thanks to its unique spectrometer, Webb can break down even the smallest light signal into its individual frequencies and thus even analyze the metallicity of these extremely distant galaxies. This revealed something really strange because these spectrometer analyses provided evidence of a low metallicity of glass C13, which means that the proportion of heavy elements is very low and that this galaxy clearly shows signs of being a young galaxy. At the same time, this galaxy is so unusually highly structured and has a beautiful shape and luminosity. According to our previous models of galaxy evolution, it should be several billion years old. According to this, however, the period of its formation would have been before the Big Bang. Now the researchers could have said that glass C13 is just a rare exception, but that can be ruled out because this discovery was not the only one. Shortly after glass C13, Macy's galaxy was confirmed, and it's even older. Astronomer Steve and Finkelstein discovered it on his daughter Macy's birthday and gave her this unusual find as a gift. The sensational age of this galaxy has been unambiguously confirmed by multiple testing procedures, and it's certain that it existed 300 or possibly even 270 million light years after the Big Bang. Similar to Glass C13, Macy's galaxy also shows evidence of high star formation rates and light metals. Again, this certainly speaks for a young and very active galaxy, but its degree of organization is so high that the formation of Macy's galaxy would also go back to the time before the Big Bang. 300 million years after the Big Bang, only the first stars are likely to have lit up space. Basic loose star clusters and smaller populations that look like proto-galaxies would theoretically still be just about possible. However, galaxies that already contained hundreds of thousands or millions of stars at that time are not compatible with our standard models of astrophysics. Finkelstein and his team discovered many more galaxy candidates. At least 10 more very old galaxies have been confirmed and Finkelstein said in an interview that the first deep field image probably shows hundreds of these galaxies. However, it will be some time before all these discoveries can be clearly confirmed. A short time later, the Webb telescope followed up, and a second deep field image again showed evidence that nothing in the young universe was as researchers thought. 
JWST confirms stars are powered by dark matter. Since the first incredible discoveries of the JWST, researchers have been desperately searching for new answers. How does it all fit together? Did the Big Bang never happen, was it earlier? Or did stars and galaxies develop much faster, and in a completely different way than previously assumed? These are all possible answers, but any new answer must somehow be compatible with the old foundations of astrophysics. And this is precisely where many experts suspect the sticking point lies. It's possible that our entire physics is based on some false assumptions. The JWST has made another exciting discovery in this context. Three potential dark stars, all from the earliest epoch of the universe, are a new revolution in astronomy. This discovery is particularly remarkable because it's the very first proof that these objects really existed. The stars were identified by their unusual radiation, which does not match the known properties of normal stars. Dark stars are theoretical objects that have long been predicted by astrophysicists, but have not yet been observed in reality. They differ fundamentally from normal stars as we know them, as they are powered by dark matter and not by nuclear fusion. Dark stars were first proposed as purely theoretical about 15 years ago. These stars are thought to have existed in the earliest phases of the universe, around 300 million years after the Big Bang. Instead of producing energy through the fusion of hydrogen into helium, dark stars are powered by the decomposition of dark matter. Dark matter, which makes up about 27% of the mass of the universe, cannot be observed directly as it does not emit or absorb electromagnetic radiation. Its existence has so far only been proven by its gravitational effects on visible matter. If we now have proof with the dark stars that these stars really exist, we also have indirect proof of the existence of dark matter, and we could study its properties further. Dark matter is considered to be one of the key building blocks of the universe. If we can better understand its properties based on observations and discoveries such as dark stars, we can also reconstruct the structure of the universe. Dark stars are significantly larger and more luminous than normal stars of the same age. They can be up to 10,000 times brighter than normal stars and have a much greater mass. These stars may have played a hitherto underestimated role in the reionization and overall development of the universe. If they were the first sources of light after the dark ages of the cosmos, they may have had a previously unknown influence on galaxy formation and may be the key to understanding the impossible galaxies discovered by Weber Fritz Zwicky and Paul Dirac, right? Who would have thought that two researchers who have long since been forgotten would once again become the focus of scientific attention thanks to the discoveries of the JWST? Fritz Zwicky and Paul Dirac were two outstanding physicists of the 20th century. Zwicky is best known for his work on dark matter. One of Zwicky's lesser-known theories is that of tired light. Dirac made fundamental contributions to quantum mechanics and cosmology. In the 1930s, Fritz Zwicky conducted research into galaxy clusters, in particular the Coma Galaxy Cluster. He postulated that an invisible mass, which he called dark matter, must be present in order to explain certain dynamics that cannot be caused by gravity alone. His theory of dark matter was initially controversial but later became part of standard cosmology. Zwicky's much less recognized theory of tired light states that light gradually loses energy as it travels through the cosmos, increasing its wavelength and causing it to undergo a redshift. This is in contrast to the generally accepted explanation that the redshift is caused by the expansion of the universe. According to Zwicky, Interactions of photons with intergalactic material are responsible for the loss of energy. If we believe the scientists, the idea of an expanding universe could therefore be an observational error. If it is true that the light shifts into the red color spectrum because it is fatigued, all our calculations on the age of the universe, and also the age determinations of the galaxies discovered by James Webb would very likely be wrong we would then possibly have a fundamentally wrong picture of the entire cosmos. Paul Dirac was a contemporary of Zwicky and researched quantum mechanics in the UK and developed the Dirac equation, which describes the behavior of fermions and predicts the existence of antimatter. Dirac further proposed that the constants of nature, which underlie all physical laws and interactions, are not necessarily constant but could change over the course of cosmic history. 
According to Dirac, for example, the coupling constants that determine the strength of fundamental forces could vary over time. This seemed rather unlikely during Dirac's lifetime, and the idea did not find its way into our standard astrophysics. But now everything is different. We are no longer getting anywhere with our old physics. Discoveries in cosmology are showing us more and more inconsistencies, and the idea that quantities and natural forces could change over time is gaining ground again. Dirac's hypothesis of variable natural constants opens up the possibility that the physical laws we observe today have not always been the same. This could explain some anomalies in the cosmic microwave background radiation and also the distant galaxies that do not fit into the old picture of the gradual development of the cosmos. The Canadian researcher Rajendra Gupta was one of the first to take Swicky's and Dirac's old theories seriously again, combining them and coming up with a new calculation of the age of our universe, 26.7 billion years. A second variant of the recalculation even showed the possibility that the universe is 40 billion years old and possibly even older. If this is true, we will probably never be able to see all the way back to the beginning. It's possible that our technologies will continue to improve over the coming decades, but certain principles of physics argue against us being able to detect even older light with telescopes. This is one last chance for us to find out how the universe really began and how it works. We would have to find the unified field formula. This God formula would be the key to understanding all phenomena and forces in the universe. Subscribe for more informative videos. Thanks for watching.